and to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers advance against me to eat my flesh, when my foes and my enemies come against me, it is they who will stumble and fall. If an army lines up against me, my heart will not fear. If war rises against me, even then, I will keep trusting. One thing I ask from the Lord, this is what I seek, that I live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Yes, he will hide me in his shelter on the day of trouble. He will hide me in his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be lifted up above the enemies who surround me. I will offer sacrifices at his tent with a joyful shout. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear me, O Lord, with my voice I call. Be merciful to me and answer me. When you say, Seek my face, my heart says to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, who saves me. If my father and my mother abandoned me, the Lord would take me in. Lord, teach me your way and lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not give me up to the desire of my foes, because false witnesses rise up against me, and so do those who breathe out violence. Unless I was confident to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. The Word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Kings chapters 11 and 12. Solomon was king over all Israel and Jerusalem for 40 years. Solomon rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. His son Rehoboam ruled as king in his place. Rehoboam went to Shechem because all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, he heard about this, and he returned from Egypt, so the people sent for him. Then Jeroboam and the entire assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now lighten your father's harsh service and the heavy yoke he laid on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam said to them, Leave me for three days and then return to me. So the people left. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon while he was still alive. He asked, What answer do you advise me to give to these people? They said to him, If today you become a servant to this people, if you serve them and answer them with kind words, then they will be your servants for all time. But he rejected the advice which the old men offered him, Instead, he consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. He said to them, What answer do you advise that we should give to these people who said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father laid on us? The young men who had grown up with him said, This is what you should say to this people who said to you, Your father laid a heavy yoke on us, now lighten our yoke. Tell them this, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father imposed a heavy yoke on you. I will make your yoke heavier. My father punished you with whips, but I will punish you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, because the king had said, Come back to me on the third day. The king answered the people harshly, because he had rejected the advice which the old men had offered. He spoke to them as the young men advised him, my father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. 
My father punished you with whips, but I will punish you with scorpions. The king did not listen to the people, because this turn of events was from the Lord, in order to fulfill his word, which the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam son of Nebat through Ahijah from Shiloh. All Israel saw that the king had not listened to them. So the people answered the king, What share do we have in David? No portion in the son of Jesse. To your tents, Israel. Now look after your own house, David. So Israel went to their tents. Rehoboam continued to rule over the people of Israel who were living in the cities of Judah. King Rehoboam sent out Adoram, who was in charge of forced labor, but all Israel stoned him to death. King Rehoboam, however, was able to get in his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David until this day. The Word of the Lord. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 7. So then, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that defiles flesh and spirit as we seek to bring sanctification to its goal in the fear of God. Make room for us in your hearts. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have taken advantage of no one. I am not saying this to condemn you. In fact, I have said before that you are in our hearts. We died together and lived together with you. I have great confidence in you. I am very proud of you. I am filled with encouragement. I am overflowing with joy in all our trouble. In fact, when we came to Macedonia, our flesh had no relief. Instead, we were troubled in every way, conflicts on the outside, fears on the inside. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us with the arrival of Titus, and not only with his arrival, but also with the comfort he had received concerning you. He told us about your longing, your sorrow, and your serious concern for me. As a result, I rejoiced even more. For even if I caused you sorrow with my letter, I do not regret it. Even though I did regret it, for I see that my letter caused you sorrow, yet only for a little while. Now I rejoice, not because you were made to feel sorrow, but because this sorrow resulted in repentance. Yes, you were made sorry in a godly way, so you were not harmed in any way by us. In fact, godly sorrow produces repentance, which leads to salvation, leaving no regret. On the other hand, worldly sorrow produces death. Yes, look what godly sorrow produced in you, what diligence, what eagerness to clear yourself, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what zeal, what correction. In every way you proved yourselves to be pure in this matter. So although I wrote to you, it was not because of the one who did what was wrong or because of the one who was harmed by it. I wrote instead so that your genuine concern for us would be revealed to you in the sight of God. For that reason, we have been comforted. In addition to our comfort, we rejoiced a great deal more at the joy of Titus, because all of you have set his spirit at rest. For if I made any boast to him about you, I have not been put to shame. Rather, just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting to Titus turned out to be true. And his heart goes out to you even more, as he remembers the obedience of all of you, how you received him with fear and trembling. I rejoice because I have complete confidence in you. The Word of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, 
for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we have put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him.